All right, folks. We'll call the Orville City Council meeting to order for October 15th, 2024. Uh, regular meeting uh, will be going into closed session right after the roll call. So, Nancy, can we have roll call, please? Council Member Johnstone? Present. Council Member Rake? Here. Council Member Thompson? Here. We have Council Member Goodson absent. Council Member Weber? Here. Vice Mayor Smith? Here. Mayor Pittman? Here. Thank you. All right, folks, we'll be in closed session. We'll return shortly. Thank you. Folks, we'll call the uh, Orville City Council meeting to order. Um, city Attorney will give us an announcement from closed door session. Okay, closed session now. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Direction was given to staff, no report of action from closed session tonight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll now have the Pledge of Allegiance and I'd ask their uh, chief. Pins to lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you, and before I continue with the agenda, I want to welcome all of you here to the State Theater for this uh, meeting and our discussion. A little bit of a safety message is, if for some reason we have to leave the building, earthquake or something like that, we would ask you to all use the exits, either the one you came in or one of the others that are marked in the perimeter of the building, and then meet up in the parking lot across the street from the caddy corner to this area so that we can account for everyone if we had to leave the building. Um, there are blue cards in the back. If you wish to speak on one of the items tonight, please fill out the blue card. We'll make sure to get you on the agenda to talk. And uh, the State Theater, we want to thank the stage for providing this facility for us. It's a really nice place. And I uh, hope you all consider using this at their, their uh, helpful uh, preparations for us tonight. Next item is uh, adoption of agenda. If I, may, if I may, Mr. Mayor, we have a, one correction on the agenda or one update. Okay. Just due to the change in venue tonight, we're gonna, we typically stream on both YouTube and Zoom tonight. We're just gonna be streaming on Zoom, but the, the Zoom feed or stream will be uploaded to YouTube later on this evening. So it will be available on YouTube again later, but for the meeting tonight, it'll be streamed on Zoom. Little technical issue. We don't have YouTube recordings in this building as we do at the council chambers. Thank you, sir. So, for council, do we have an adoption of agenda? Motion that we adopt the agenda. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Johnstone. Yes. Councilmember Rake. Yes. Councilmember Thompson. Yes. Councilmember Weber. Aye. Vice Mayor Smith. Yes. Mayor Pittman. Yes. Uh, we have no presentations or proclamations to meet. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to move forward to the uh, public communication hearing of non-agenda items. Um, do we have some cards? Yes, we do, Mr. Mayor. Okay. First, Let, we before we begin, one of the things we're going to have later on is a discussion of the fireworks. So um, we have so many here. We're not. I'm not. I don't want to re restrict anyone's three-minute time. But if you do hear someone say the same thing, message that you're wishing to say then you could stand up and say, yes, I agree with so-and-so on that particular item. It just helps us with the timing. But we appreciate all your comments and conversation. We want to have that. We don't want to limit that time. But if it's a repeat of some, what someone else said, then your name and let us know that you agree with them would be great to have in, in the entrance of time. Go ahead, please. First, we have the cameraman follow along with Donna Cher. Welcome, sir. Good evening, Oroville City Council. I never thought in my six years of almost living in this county I'd be speaking at the State Theater, but here I am. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, I have a document to provide counsel. Just a letter to you guys about some outdated requests that need answering. 
Um, don't have too much for general comment. My main meet is, well, pretty much everybody here is for the fireworks. So you'll be hearing from me on that as well, but just update the city. I went to the Hmong New Year Festival this past weekend at the Nelson uh, Sports Complex area. Very uh, fun event, uh, interesting to you know check out something different. First time going, uh, had a good time. Hope to see more of that. Um, Last, uh, or I think it was last uh, this past weekend or sometime last week we had, or right at the beginning of this week, I know it was in the news recently, we had another uh, crash on Montgomery Street that resulted in a fatality. Um, we need to get uh, either some, you know, either ask CHP or maybe the sheriff, you know, since he wants us to vote on Measure H and he drives through our town um, or, you know, either put some more effort to getting this traffic division I hear that's still in the works of the police department, but we got to get some control on Montgomery Street here. This is out of control. People are driving recklessly, not just on Montgomery Street, but really all over this town. And they say people that drive in Southern California are bad. Well, I say come to Oroville. We got just as bad drivers here. Um, definitely need to get some focus on this. Uh, it's a shame someone had to lose their life. Uh, I don't want to see more people, you know, I mean, if you run a stop sign, you know, you take that risk, but, you know, regardless, it seems like the other party was traveling a high rate of speed. Now, from my understanding, it's only about 30 miles, you know, the max on certain parts of that road. So it's not a drag strip, but people are treating that. So we get some uh, either SCHP or other law enforcement besides their own. If we get some more coverage out there, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next one. Next, we have Donna Share. City Council members, I live on Montgomery Street, and in the past couple months, traffic has tripled. I have a blink camera that faces the street because I've had a vehicle stolen, and I've had homeless people sleep on my front porch. Um, so from 10 o'clock at night until five in the morning, there will be 200 cars driving down Montgomery, big rig trucks. It's, it's insane. And then again, with the speed and the unsafety and the recklessness that people drive on Montgomery, it has caused fatalities. And speed bumps, whatever, stop signs i've you know talked to city hall before and they're going well traffic you know stop signs don't really work because they're going to run them we've seen them run them i have noticed there is more street or police patrolling it which is nice to see but something's got to be done there's a motorcycle kid three in the morning just goes straight down montgomery and then jumps on the levee and comes back around and does that loop for about 10 minutes, 20 minutes. It's crazy. But anyways, just if something can, you know, you guys could look into it, I think that would be great for everybody's benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Bill Spear followed with Kevin Thompson. I, quick question here. Yeah. I wanted to clarify. I just want to speak into that, that just, you know, I know that, um, I mean, just absolutely horrible and you're right something needs to be done i think there's i know that uh, throughout our city traffic is uh, and this issue you know there's a couple specific areas where um, just reckless driving and the amount of traffic i just hear it all over it's downtown it's in my district it's, it's down south side i mean it's um so we i just you know i know for sure this council is taking this seriously we are looking ways of uh expediting or figuring out instead of just because you're right it's it's completely out of hand and um we're all as i think well i know i'm i'm equally as upset about this i hear you know people squealing their tires and it just makes my makes my blood boil so um we're definitely upset well, i'm upset by it and we're looking into it just you know thank you next card we have bill spear followed with kevin thompson mr spear Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Council. Verse of the day is in Psalms 
34, 18, it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And, um, you know, I was uh, watching the news this morning and um, seeing that the uh, governor just signed legislation for um, uh, gas is going to get more expensive. And I'm just uh, going to pray this evening for an awakening of our state and, and our nation. It's uh, that God would put in some uh, common sense people to uh, do common sense stuff. It's unbelievable the things in our state as they continue to go against everything that is that is common sense are practical and you know the price of everything is crazy and then for them to to put legislation that's going to make gas even go higher is just unbelievable and i uh pray that everyone here would get registered and people would vote and make their voices heard that would uh get tired of complaining about it and uh do something about it so Father, I thank you for the scripture that I wrote this, I read this morning that our hope is in you. It ain't in either political party, but we do need common sense people put in office. And we we pray for our state, Lord, an awakening in our state. We pray for an awakening in our in our nation. We pray for our county. They're uh needing more money. Everybody's needing more money. All the families are are needing more money. But um, where's it come from? It says, uh, our hope comes from the Lord. So as we uh, put our trust in you, that you are going to wake up the people. You are going to wake up the church. You are going to wake up our state and our, our nation. That you will raise up people uh, to be leaders, raise up people with common sense to make a change. We thank you for this evening and we pray for all our city council members, all the people that serve, and we pray for them that you would give them supernatural wisdom, supernatural guidance for our city and our county, that you would give us that supernatural provision in, in the time of, of famine, in the time of, of the lean years that you would get us through, that we would be an example that other uh, counties and cities would look to what's going on here we love you. We thank you for the hope that we have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Next, we have Kevin Thompson. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and, and Welcome. Council members. Good to see everyone. And and certainly, we just want to uh, give honor to God tonight, who is first and foremost in, in my life. So I just simply rose to just to say uh, good luck to those that will be running and uh, seeking uh, seats on this council. We pray that God's divine wisdom and and will be done. I, I'm standing on behalf of the Haven of Hope on Wheels, and and those that know that sometime back, well, roughly seven years ago, we this council here uh, made a generous donation to actually our first Haven of Hope on Wheels, a shower uh, laundry facility. Uh, it's been getting a lot of work. Uh, we just want to tip our hat to those that were on the board. I know I don't see Madam Goodson. I know the, the Drapers and, and others that were a part of that uh, board. Uh, since then, we got our second trailer. We got a third. Uh, we got a fourth. And we got a total of five of them now since uh, 2017. Uh, it's a great uh, uh, source. Uh, certainly, it helps people get to a position to where they're clean. And this allowed them to sit into at the doctor's office and go to job interviews and be able to have clean clothes and so on and so forth. It's mobile. That's the cool thing about it. Uh, people don't, we're not confined to a building to get these services. Uh, we're coming to a point to where we're uh, certain funding is drawing up uh, and we are doing a lot of stuff. Thank God we were good stewards over the finances that we raise and receive over the years and we continue to serve. Uh, in the Burns Square and Concow and Berry Creek and you know, Cohasset and Paradise uh, and other areas. And here in Oroville, you know, two, two days a week here in Oroville at the Hope Center where we see hundreds and you guys get our reports twice a year. 
you know, the thousands of showers and, and th uh, thousands of laundries uh, that we've done throughout uh, those seven uh, years. So we're just asking that uh, you have an ear to hear when uh, that time come and we approach City Hall. It's just that we need a partnership like this. Every other city you go to, they have a partnership uh, with programs like ours uh, with the city and, and the county. So I just want to tip my hat to you all tonight to just say thank you for standing strong and at some point, we would just like to sit down with you all and just see how we can partner to make sure that these services don't die on the vine. So thank you very much for this Be time. Before you leave the speaker, um, help me out, please make a quick comment about the ribbon cutting we had on Wednesday at the Southside Community Center with the um, intervention. Wow, and and that is, it's just so exciting. And yes, we had the ribbon cutting. We're, we want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for coming over, Councilman Eric Smith, uh, his team. I want to thank Spencer Hope and Holdem and that uh, listen to our vision that we had for our community to help undergird our, our kids that might be dealing with difficult times in their lives. It was a great success. And we didn't know we had planned on after the ribbon cutting, waiting a week before we launched the program. But just before we cut the ribbon and Councilman Eric was there. Someone whispered in my ear, we got our first client. <laughs> so we couldn't even get out. So we're so thankful. And I want to thank he, he's sitting right here next to me. I just want to thank him, uh, Ms. Torres to, uh, and that board uh, for allowing us to play a big part uh, in the youth's life in our community. So thank you for that reminder, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good night. Next, Blue Card. Mr. Mayor, we do not have any more knowledge on that book card. Okay. Thank you all for speaking. And uh, you can always turn in a blue card, even if you want to speak later. We'll have a second opportunity later on in the program if you wish to speak on a non agenda item. Point yeah. of clarification where are blue cards being turned in tonight? Nancy? They're turned in um, at the back and outside the lobby. There should be a box that says turn in blue cards here. It's right next to the blue cards. Okay, so there's a box right next to the blue card stack. Yeah, uh, well, Fred got them for me, but they, they call, they're more than welcome to bring in yeah. on the site for me as well. Yeah, I think, I think since the meeting started, it'd probably be best so we don't miss anybody. If you have a blue card, go ahead and bring it up here and we'll grab it from you. Yeah, if we haven't received it. We don't want to miss anyone. Thank you for that. Appreciate I that. I checked on the blue cards right before the meeting started. And okay. I had them all collected at that time. All right. Uh, next item comes up to council announcements and reports. Um, and I, I thank uh, Reverend Thompson for one of my issues that we had the ribbon cutting. Um, we've already been mentioned the Hmong New Year, the farm to table dinner DBA had, the airport fly in, and the um, drive in movie at the airport. Uh, this is a busy town, folks. I'm just going to tell you if you think you can sit at home and not do anything, that's just not true at all. There's lots of activities going on. So the rest of the councilmen. I just wanted to speak on the drive-in movie. It, uh, even though there was a little bit of rain, it was a really fun event. Um, there was not a there was there was a decent amount of people that came, and so it was fun. We watched um, Herbie reloaded, and we sat under canopies, and we had popcorn, and it was just a really fun family event. So I encourage you all to come uh, to the next one that we're going to be having. I think there's one up in Chico, uh, actually this weekend as well. So it was really fun. Any other councilman? Yeah. Oh, councilman I just want to give props to um, you, guys, you got to move it close. Michael Phelps and uh, Metalworks. This last week they had Steel Day, and uh, it was their first Steel Day in eight years. There was 110 students that showed up from all over the county and outside the county, uh, including Turlock and Quincy and View College, Chico, Orville. A um, bunch of students showed up from the high schools and were exposed to what it's like to work in uh, metal and welding, and whether it be mobile welding or at a um, situation like uh, Metalworks. And it was just great to see uh, them open that up for the local students to get exposure to a potential avenue for a job for them. So anyway, just uh, want to thank them for doing that. And we'd love to see more like that so the students around here can see what the options they have are to have jobs and a career. So yeah, yeah, it was great. Vice Mayor Smith, looks like he's ready. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I just wanted to double down on the comments from Pastor Thompson regarding the program that uh, the Southside Community Center is now engaged in, in uh, addressing at-risk kids. Uh, years ago, when I was a post-chaplain down at Camp Parks, 
working with some families whose children were um, falling into uh, you know into that category. And it quickly, I discovered that there, there's no, inter until a child falls into the criminal justice system, is there some sort of, you know, safety net, which really it's kind of post, right? They've already now fallen into that, um, into that experience and, and they're really down a very dark trajectory. And so I just applaud him and his efforts uh, to provide something that is so needed and that I believe will save lives uh, and uh, will make a huge difference in uh, our young people. Uh, and it's so needed. Uh, and this community that I was in was a, a relatively uh, fiscally strong community. And yet there was, there was, there was nothing there. I mean, until a child really fell into that um, state where now they've broken a law, was there, uh, you know, something for them, if you could even consider that. Uh, so again, uh, I think the Orville is a blessed community with a lot of folks who have big hearts and are really seeking to make a, a big difference in our community. So I'm looking forward to seeing great things happen. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Weber, go ahead. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I want to start off by saying thank you to Code Enforcement um, because you guys have been doing a very good job. Um, I noticed that you guys are tackling the uh, cart issues that we're experiencing around town. So I've been noticing a lot of that. And I just want to say thank you very much for you guys' timely response to my request on these issues too. Thank you. Um, the Hmong New Year, of course, was fantastic. It was awesome. It was very fascinating because one of the Hmong elders I sat next to basically gave me an interpretation of everything that was being said, said and a history lesson of General Vang Pao and mm -hmm. um, how he led the Hmong people out of captivity and into freedom, uh, fleeing uh, communism. So that was extremely fascinating. Um, traffic calming measures. I want to agree with everybody on Montgomery. That was a tragic tragedy the other day. That young man was driving like a madman, decided to blow that stop sign, not only took his own life, but almost the life of two other people. So I agree. I would love to see us do um, a comprehensive study on what that looks like to get that calmed down because uh, not only that district, but I know all districts that are represented up here have specific streets that are um, huge problems. Um, youth Initiative Program, uh, Pastor Kevin Thompson and his team up there, um, Dr. Spencer Holtum uh, partnering with them. I thought that was a fantastic idea. It was, um, and I can't, I was uh, checking in this this morning and they've already got a massive uh, participation daily. So this is a really good thing for our community. Um, as announcements that are upcoming, this week in show and stroll will be Friday and that will be the spooktacular. But also on Saturday night, we're gonna be having a, or they're having a, uh, what's it called? Frights and lights, um, or lights and frights. I can't remember what order. Halloween parade downtown. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun for our community. And then um, talks are gaining speed um, <clears throat> between um, Butte College uh, and myself in terms of getting because I've been expressing my desire to see a South County campus here, along with other council per persons up here, that we want to see a permanent South County uh, facility for Pew College right here in Orville. And so those are, those talks are gaining momentum, and I'm looking forward to uh, where that's going to go. So I think that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Any other council members? No. Administration reports? Do we want to start with Fred? Yeah, I could start if you guys like. Um, I got a couple updates. Uh, I'd like to start on Montgomery Street. Um, it's a pretty big topic this evening. So uh, our contractor has started work. So the work has started out on Montgomery Street. We started removing the uh, permit striping today, or actually yesterday. Work will commence on the overlay starting Monday, Monday morning. And it's expected to be out there doing the overlay for four days, and the road will be sealed in four days um, the plan is they're starting at feather river working east on the outside lane which is on the curb and the gutter side of the roadway a continuous stretch down to washington turning around at washington coming back down on the outside lane from the veterans building all the way back down to feather river there, there is going to be a detour out there and we're going to push traffic off onto bird street during that time it takes roughly three hours for the material to set up and it will be able to drive on it after three hours. I did make contact with several of the business owners on Montgomery Street today. There's a few that I did miss. 
that I will be reaching out with tomorrow. There is a little bit of a confusion that you can't drive on it for the first three hours. The road should be opened up intermittently throughout the day. It really depends on how fast the tar and the material turns before we can drive on it. Um, I explained to many of the business owners that they could park on the side streets to the north and the south side of Montgomery to gain access to many of the businesses. Um, there's a few that were concerned with that, but it's the nature of the business with, with uh, streets. Um, it is planned to be off closed from about 7 a.m. up to about 4.30 in the afternoon. That doesn't mean it's gonna be closed that long, but that's potentially where it could go. Um, it is construction in four days, we'll be done with the overlay. Approximately one week after that, all the new striping, which I wanna to touch bases on as well. The striping program on Montgomery from Feather River up to Washington is completely reimagined. I shared it with you guys, uh, with council a couple months ago. I did leave a picture of the representation of what the striping is looking going to look like. Uh, we changed the crosswalks into a, a continental design versus the bars for higher visibility. There will be a new three foot buffer zone on both sides of the street, which leaves an eight foot on street parking with 11 foot uh, travel lane. It's going to neck down the road visually and that should help calm traffic um, to a certain degree. Um, but we feel pretty confident to slow people down because the lanes are narrower and it gives us much more room with cars parked on the side. Um, also, we're going to book in Montgomery somewhere around 4th with uh, self-reporting radar signs that are showing what your speed is with the posted uh, speed as well. Something else with the striping that we haven't done before, we're actually going to paint legends on this new asphalt. At the radar sign, it's going to have the posted speed thermoplastic onto the asphalt. It's gonna say 25 miles an hour on the street. It currently does not have that. So this corridor is gonna look completely different by the, in about two to three weeks. And then we'll begin uh, Myers doing the same program. I, so I really wanted to speak to that. I know there's concern with the businesses down there. We're gonna be as flexible as we can, but we do need to get the road done. So, and we gotta use favorable weather conditions. Um, also, I wanted to make mention about the bathroom. I know there's concerns with the downtown bathroom. Um, we're working on with a couple contractors waiting for a couple more bids. And it's our plan to come back to council around the 19th of November, which I think is the third Tuesday of the month with some ideas and some bids on what it's gonna take to get that bathroom refurbished. Um, I also like to speak on the uh, the drive-in. From what I understand, there's about 70 cars. It was very well attended, even though the rain and it was kind of tough being in a car with the windshield wipers on, but it was still a really pleasant <laughs> experience. Yeah. Uh, the flying was really uh, done pretty well. We had about 20 transient aircraft that came in, including Cal Fire and some other agencies, but the rain kind of hampered that one as well. And there was a large flying going on at Auburn at the same time. So it is the first one. So there's always room to, to improve on it. So it was a busy day at our, at our airport and the weather did not cooperate with us. Um, and that's what I have for now. Thanks. Uh, we weren't able to put this picture on a display here, but uh, if you check the website, you'll see the plan on narrowing down the Montgomery Street in hopes that it might encourage slower traffic. So that's one of the topics being worked on. So that we we have these up here, and they're, you're welcome to get one after the end of the meeting if you like. Thank you, Fred. Sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I, uh, I missed on part of our striping campaign that's going out on Montgomery Street. All the corners and the curbs will be painted red, 20 feet, about 11 feet from the center of the curb, which is not currently done now. So there's going to be a bigger red curb, no parking near the corners on down through the corridor as well. So that'll help with some of the visibility okay. and that will be in compliance with local state law. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Who's next? I have a few things, Mr. Mayor, just uh, really quickly. The we received a few emails. I think the councils received them as well from various constituents with regards to the fluorination of the water from in uh, the city from Cal Water. I just wanted to give everyone an update on that. We have been working very closely with Cal Water. They did file their application actually last week with the California Public Utility Commission. They're hoping to expedite it, but the CPUC, as I'm sure you know, they have their own processes to receive input, do draft opinions, get more input before they do a final opinion, but they're doing what they can to expedite that process. But um, it, we're, it's in the hands of the CPUC right now, but Cal Water is pushing that and we're doing everything. If, if we need to take an action from the council's perspective, I'll bring it forward. So that is going forward. Um, 
I'm not sure if people are, are hearing yet, but there is another public safety power shutoff. PSPS is scheduled for later this week. I, it's, I've, I've heard Thursday night, then I've also heard Friday morning. Obviously, it depends on how the wind conditions. PG&E could change that. They could completely pull the PSPS. But at this point in time, it's more it's mostly communities in, our, in the foothill. There's nothing directly in the city limits that's going to be impacted right now. I see Concow, Yankee Hill, Polga, Sterling City, more in the Foothill area that are going to be impacted by that. And I think it's scheduled to come back online on Saturday. But again, I think PG&E is, they, they will be monitoring the weather conditions and make adjustments if they're necessary. And then just one little quick thing, uh, museum trick or treat, that's going to be happening October 26th from three to seven. All the museums here within the city are, are open and free to the kids to come and uh, visit the museums and get some candy for Halloween. So I encourage everyone to participate in that. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other council reports looking at the table? Any other department heads? Seeing none, then uh, we'll move forward to the consent calendar. Do we have any blue cards on the consent calendar? We do, Mr. Mayor. We have one for item three and one for item four. Well, let's have them. The first blue card speaker is for item three, Linda Olson. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Thank you for offering this time for us to speak. It's wonderful to be able to do that. So I uh, am speaking about the hazard mitigation, um, the update on the uh, resolution 2923 the 2024 Oroville Local Hazard Mitigation Plan update. Um, it's my it's an opportunity for me to weave it into a future speaking uh, item. And what I noticed when I read the packet was on page 65 of the packet, the table D5 City of Oroville Hazard Identification Assessment. At the very bottom. Uh, of uh, the um, the last item on the table is wildfire. <clears throat> the geographic extent listed for wildfire is extensive. Under the likelihood of future occurrences, highly likely. Magnitude slash severity is critical. Significance is high and climate change influence is also high. Therefore, my logical brain says this wildfire, this mitigation um, plan defends completely a ban on the sales of fireworks within the city of Oroville. Thank you, and I'll speak to that later. Thank you, ma'am. Who else do we have? Next we have is item four. Uh, Blue Car speaker is Spencer Halton. Welcome, Spencer. Thank you very much, Mayor Pittman, Vice Mayor Smith, members of the city council and city administration. My name is Dr. Spencer Holton and I'm the superintendent of Oroville City Elementary School District. And I just wanna first say thank you so much for agendizing a letter of support for Measure E um, for my district and for all of our residents and especially our students. Um, I'd just like to speak a moment about Measure E so that those in the audience and yourselves um, will have a better understanding of uh, what our intent is. So Measure E is a general obligation bond where we're seeking about $18 million of bond monies so that we can um, do some new construction and also some mitigation of refurbishing, and updating roofs, windows, and other infrastructures in our district. Now, what is very, very important about this bond is in the early 2000s, uh, this city supported a general obligation bond to build Ishi Hills Middle School. Well, that is 
expiring, that bond is expiring within the next year. And this bond, our intent is just to do an extension from that bond. And we set it at $18 million and that will match the same amount of taxes. So it's an extension of taxes. It's not new taxes. It's not gonna be more taxes, but gonna take that first bond and just extend it another 20 years so that we can have access to $18 million. But more importantly, it will give us an opportunity to go to the state and ask for up to 55% of matching funds. So we're hoping to take this bond from $18 million and ask the state to match up to 55%, which would put us in the neighborhood of about $27 million to put towards our schools here in Oroville City. Some of the things that we plan on doing that, I mentioned earlier, um, infrastructure, roofing, windows, upgrades to electrical and to other infrastructure. But the biggest piece that we'd like to bring to one of our middle schools is Ishi Hills Middle Schools. We'd like to build a new wing um, for what's called CTE, which is Career Technical Education. Um, we see a need to continue to um, encourage people, our students, to have access to the trades and be exposed to those. We want our students to not only have a great education when it comes to math and English language arts and writing, but also um, also get hands-on opportunities um, in career technical education. And so we'd like to be able to that time. Thank you very much. And I appreciate all your support in that letter. Um, again, no new taxes, just an extension and I appreciate your support. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have a question from... Uh, Just a brief Smith. comment yeah. and applauding uh, the district for being forward thinking. You know, uh, often it came up in conversation with young girls not being highly interested in math and in engineering. And a lot of effort went into trying to, you know, encourage young ladies because they're just as smart as the boys and they know it. Um, and so uh, in the last decade, we've, there's been a lot of uh, lackluster and interest in trades, uh, but yet it's a very rewarding and high paying opportunity. We have, I think it was mentioned, uh, Metalworks here earlier, just a tremendous job. They're doing multi-million dollar operation and robots and all the technical that goes into that. So there is a tremendous opportunity in the trade. So getting them young and early, uh, and encouraging our young people uh, into that profession, uh, I think is uh, good. I applaud you. That's a good job. And and we and because it's not just all about the four year college experience. There are many paths to being uh, successful. And so I just thank you, Dr. Holtham, for uh, bringing that about. And hopefully, Measure E will be uh, successful. Well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Um, we have any other cards? We do not have any more, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Thompson wanted to make a clarification on item number two. Just to, not a clarification, but a, just to highlight this um, that our staff has put together. Amy, you did a great job with this. I just want to Amy Bergstrom with this. This is uh, for those that haven't seen the agenda or may not know uh, this program that the city has, which is uh, the owner occupied rehabilitation loan program. Um, for people who qualify with certain um, income to be able to put monies towards their house for uh, much needed improvements. I think it's just a great program. I want to applaud uh, Amy and her staff for that. And so that's pretty much all I wanted to highlight it. Thanks. All right. With that being said, I'll entertain a motion for uh, consent agenda items one through six. So moved. A motion that we adopt the consent calendar. I'll second. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Johnstone? Yes. Councilmember Rafe? Yes. Councilmember Thompson? Yeah. Councilmember Weber? Yep. Vice Mayor Smith? Yes. Mayor Pittman? Thank you. Yes. All right, Those folks, appreciate it. Six yes, one absent. All right. Thank you. Um, next item under regular business, it'll be a discussion of the sale and use of fireworks within the city of Oroville. Um, I'll open it up to the council for any comments before we open it up to the blue cards and the commenters. Council members? I'll go first. Okay. Go ahead. 
I just want to thank everybody for being here on this item tonight. When this first came before the council, I was um, rather surprised at the, the the low attendance uh, that night and not to slight anybody. I know I talked to a few um, residents in our town. We all have lives and kids and schedules and there's so much. So, um, so this is the reason why we brought this back is because we want to hear from the community. I know that there is a uh, passionate opinion on this item on both sides. So just to put it out there, as far as I'm considering this is, you know, this is when you have, when you have an item that's so contentious, it's so important to number one, hear from the community, but number two, when it is as contentious as this one, I think it needs to go to the people. So my desire tonight is to hear from both sides, but then I think ultimately it's just going to go back to the community uh, at the next ballot. So um, that's probably how it's going to go. We'll see how that, how it lands. Mm -hmm. But I just want to thank everybody for being here because it shows how important this item is on both sides. So any other council members? I would like to speak. Oh, sure. go ahead. I, I just want to thank everybody for being here. Um, it, it is very important to hear from you all. Um, we um, have our have our own thoughts about it, but I think for the most part, it should come from you all um, as we all live in this community. Um, I would like to hear, obviously, both sides. Um, I'm very patriotic, but yet I'm also very safety oriented when it comes to the community. And so, um, you know, safety does always come first, but patriotism is, um, you know, and the 4th of July and fireworks is something that most, most of us have grown up with. And so it would be a difficult thing to not be able to do that any longer. So I would like to hear from you all as well. So thank you for being here tonight. Anyone else? Yes, go ahead, Sean. Thank you very much. I, um, I echo the sentiments of what, um, Council Member Thompson and um, Johnstone just were talking about, um, in particular about uh, as it was raised during the first meeting. And I'm so thankful to see all these faces here today um, because your voices do need to be heard. And um, on either side of the aisle, and this is a, um, a hot button topic that is gonna be, I, I would imagine hotly contest contested, but the I as mentioned when uh, we had our last meeting, I said the same thing. I thought that this should be an item that would go to ballot and let the people decide. And um, Mayor Pittman and I were both uh, uh, in agreement with that. And I still think it should be that way. I think that um, we we will hear you listen. Um, I'm open to the discussion because um, I want what's right for the city. And, but I think on something like this, it needs to go to ballot and let the people decide. So thank you. Go ahead. I think when this was first raised, I had went right to that that i think that really ultimately this belongs in the hands of uh, the folks that's you all um, but additionally i think we have to have tools in our toolbox to offer all alternatives i reached out uh, to some of our state assembly uh, this past week uh, there was a bill assembly bill 3065 and it uh, was designed to give cities more options Currently, state law only allows for the sale of fireworks in a one-week window. Uh, that is the safe and saying uh, in that July, uh, early July time frame. Uh, however, the city, then we can allow the use of those fireworks uh, throughout the year. Uh, so fireworks currently cannot be sold for the uh, pre-New Year time, uh, which would be December 26th through January 1, uh, you know, again, more directed for that New Year celebration time. Um, and so this particular assembly bill, 3065, uh, was designed uh, to uh, open that door to, again, to give us additional options if that, again, is the will of our community. And so I've reached out to uh, our assembly. I've had conversation. And uh, unfortunately, this bill died early on, even before it reached committee. It, but the bill was uh, uh, let, spearheaded by a Democrat and co-authored by a Republican. So it's, you know, neither Democrats or Republicans. I think everyone sees the need uh, to pro to empower cities with additional options to still potentially provide an, an opportunity to have that experience. 
um, and, and yet uh, being able to address some of the concerns that come with the fire season. So I just wanted to add that into the mix of conversation. Um, and, uh, and then I will be requesting that uh, as a council that we reach out to, uh, well, it's uh, Eduardo Garcia who uh, sponsored and Megan Dahl who co-sponsored this bill. And then James Gallagher, who is our local representative to send them a bill requesting that this uh, bill be revived uh, to uh, add additional tools uh, for opportunity to have a, a fourth experience for a community or, or a fourth like experience. New Year's, of course, is New Year's and Fourth of July, of course, is Fourth of July. But I just want to add that into the conversation for us to have that kind of in the back of our mind and consideration of this issue. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Um, all this had a quick comment. And actually, uh, we've received, I don't know, a couple dozen emails. All those emails received by council will go into the record, so it, it doesn't go away. It stays within the record of this meeting. Um, I also want to say that I've received a number of comments about the possibility of uh, limiting the amount of use. The city of Orville currently allows use of fireworks 365 days a year, um, and that's just the way it was in the past. Uh, I have a question to the city attorney. Would it be possible for the city of Orville to restrict the use of fireworks during, say, the New Year's Day and or the holiday of the Veterans Day and the 4th of July? Is that is that a possibility for the city to control? So the answer to that is that um, the state the state does regulate um, sale, use, possession of safe and sane fireworks in the health and safety code section 12,500 to 12,728. The city, especially a charter city can be more restrictive uh, in terms of those aspects, but it can't be um, more permissive with respect to those. So you can um, impose greater restrictions than are in the health and safety code. Thank you, I've received that question many times. Uh, the other comment I'll make too is that there is an area in the city that we don't allow the use of safe and sane based upon the, um, uh, when the properties were annexed, that was part of the agreement, uh, which is the uh, Lemon, Lemon Hill Valley View area that is in the uh, wildland uh, protection zone. Uh, so there is an area where we don't allow safe and sane anytime during the year. But again, our one requirement that the state only gives us the ability to have safe and sane sold during that 10 to week period prior to the 4th of July. So that's kind of the comments uh, we're anxious to hear folks comment. Uh, do we have any blue cards? <laughs> Nancy? So, Mr. Mayor, first, I'm going to um, read names of the electronic. Oh, yes, please. Please do. I'm going to give the status of um, in support, neutral, or opposed to each after the names. Uh, first, we have Joseph Peterson um, is in support. Jim Bergman in support. Jason is neutral. Seven Sedge uh, in support. Elaine Brown. I'm sorry, could you stop for a second when you say in support? Could you be specific as far as what in support means? means that um you guys read it and agree with that comment was support in, in support of uh fireworks sales. restrictions or in support of keeping it as is uh by in support of keeping it as it is yeah okay. in support of keeping it as it is so yeah. no changes thank you that's good clarification <clears throat> um continue um is elaine brown which is opposed diane brown is opposed ronald olson is in support of Jason Holt, Jason Hood in supportive, and we have a nominous submitter, which, which his comment is in support as well. Last is Linda Olsland, which is opposed. Thank you. Moving on to our blue card speaker. First, we have Jonathan Taylor. Um, after is John, oh, Joe Peterson. Mr. Taylor? Yeah. Point of Clarification, I know that in previous sessions, we've um, limited speakers when there's more than 10 to two minutes instead of three minutes. Is that expectation in play at this time? You know, I'm not sure how many we have. Um, I, I would like to hear the three minutes uh, that the person has to say. Um, and again, I'll stress, if it's something you were here already before you come to the podium, if you just want to come and leave your name and say you support the other comment, that would be very, very helpful. Uh, we don't want to be here all night, so we would appreciate everyone's self-discipline on that. Um, I, I think it, we'll, we'll try for the three minutes. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll go back to that rule. Welcome, sir. 
you. I didn't expect me at first. <laughs> I get some light here. Uh, first off, my name is Jonathan Taylor, Commander of the American Legion, Post 95, Orville Department of California. I've been selling fireworks for my organization for over 20 years and have also helped sell at other booths of which I'm a member of those organizations. Uh, firework sales help numerous nonprofits by providing funds for youth programs. For our organization, it helps support the local Boy Scout Troop number 29 and sending students from both of our schools once a year to the Boys and Girls State program down in Sacramento for one week. We also fund American Legion Baseball. We also use funds to donate to other organizations, such as the State Theater Organ Restoration Project you have here. We've donated to that, uh, as well as the Veterans Memorial Park. Just That's just the name of few. I'm sure I will repeat things that you have already heard and read, but I'm on a limited time. <laughs> uh, punishing nonprofits and the citizens of Warville for the act of one person's ignorance and disregard to public safety is unjust for those who year after year practice public safety when they purchase safe and sane fireworks from our booths and conduct themselves accordingly. Banning safe and sane fireworks will not stop, but in my opinion, increase the amount of illegal fireworks that come into the community year after year as well. With the sales of safe and sane fireworks, the people with illegal fireworks currently co-mingle with the safe and saners in large parking lots and other safe venues to be blended in and hide amongst those who are currently obeying the law. Uh, fireworks, banning the fireworks will take the illegal, it's not gonna stop the sales of illegal fireworks or the, having them here, uh, but they will be moved from safe locations and probably be on the side streets where there's probably more grass and dry vegetation where they feel safe lighting those off. Uh, the sales of safe, safe and sane fireworks help deter those who might think of traveling out of state to obtain illegal fireworks, but instead purchase safe and sane fireworks locally as we are here and readily available. Uh, at the last discussion, uh, the council had about the fireworks, uh, there was a number given about the number of fires caused by fireworks, but it was just one number as opposed to breaking it apart. I hope that there is a fire person here who can hopefully break it apart for us. Uh, retired fire marshal, I don't know if it was a fire marshal, but it was the Dean Hill who uh, he used to check on our booze every year before we could even sell. In the personal discussion with him, he, he told me that if it if there were a lot of fires that are being caused by safe and sane, he would have recommended the cancellation of fireworks sales in the city of Orlando. Thank you. Next we have Joe Peterson. Welcome. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members. My name is Joe Peterson. I am a member of Post 95 American Legion, Orville, California. Tonight, you're probably going to hear a whole bunch of facts and figures and all those wonderful things about what this money does. What I implore the Council to do is to not forget about the human factor. When we talk about we give money to the Boy Scouts, I'm not sure how many have been Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, but those are tomorrow's leaders. When we talk about what one of the things the American Legion does, which is Boys and Girls State, those are tomorrow's leaders. Boys and Girls State, a president has gone, a Supreme Court justice. I don't have enough fingers and toes to tell you how many senators and others have gone, city council members. If we don't have the funds to bring forth to train those people, to show them that it is worthwhile to serve in government. Where do tomorrow's leaders come from? So I implore you to look at the human factor. Secondly, and lastly, what about the wonderment of children when a father, mother, grandparents go out on the 4th of July and they light off fireworks and they teach these children about the United States of America and independence, and this is why we celebrate the 4th of July. This is a joyous occasion for us. So please, as you contemplate what your vote's gonna be, 
please take into account the human factor. It is very, very important. We're not talking numbers and figures. We are talking human beings and the future leaders of the United States of America. Thank you very much for your time. It's trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. <laughs> yeah, those are all good all right. attributes that every young person should uh, learn to aspire to. Next. Thank you. Next, we have Linda Olson. Welcome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Well, I'm here to speak on the uh, ban of the sale of fireworks in the city of Oroville. Fireworks. Get it? There are no safe and sane fireworks in my world. From my deck in the East Oroville foothills, annual, we have annual gatherings of friends who come to celebrate Independence Day and the Fourth of July and uh, New Year's Eve, and also to watch the many legal and illegal fireworks throughout the county, because we have a view from the Sutter Buttes to the Table Mountains, including the city of Oroville. And I am here to tell you that if those illegal fireworks we see and observe in the city of Oroville are safe and sane, then there are no such things. They explode, they're, oh, from the river to East Oroville. And we have them that rival the sanctioned shows in the county around where we live. They're spectacular. Choices have consequences. We learn that through our lives. Bad choices cause bad consequences. The Thompson fires the evidence and the catalyst for the current discussion. Yes, it was one situation. Very bad choice, very bad consequences. I realize that. But this is what gets a discussion going, and change is happening. As a survivor of the campfire, I've lost one community to corporate greed and bad federal civic and personal choices. I do not want my new community that I love to become collateral damage for the sake of fundraising. I propose that the city of Oroville establish a community-wide roundtable discussion event focused on ways to fundraise for those groups that have benefited. I, Thank you. Next, we have Craig Hansen. Welcome, Frank. Hi, I'm Craig Henson. I'm a little tall for this. Excuse me. Yeah. I live up in uh, Kelly Ridge. I've been evacuated two times, and one time was due to fireworks. We left, went to the coast, <laughs> ended up in Crescent City. Well, we left the second, and on July 4th in Crescent City, I had people that I knew that were injured from fireworks. A lot of those fireworks will, were illegal. A lot of those fireworks were legal. They just exploded. It was an accident, but it was caused by fireworks. My neighbors 
three or four of my neighbors are from the Paradise Fire. And they have what you call PTSD. And every time we hear a firecracker or a missile or anything to do with fireworks, it puts undue stress on them, and let alone our animals. I lived in a city before I came here four years ago, city of Stockton, not exactly the best reputation. When fireworks start there, it's a month before the 4th of July, and it's two weeks after, and it is like an air raid every single night. It seems that people these days just don't have the common sense anymore. Look at Butte County. Butte County has had more fires killed more people than anywhere else in California history. You are responsible for the safety of the people of this town and this area. It is important that we stop the fireworks, we ban the fireworks. Now I have total empathy for the fundraisers. I've been with Boy Scouts of America, Rotary, I've done fundraising. It's time to change the way you raise funds. There's a lot of creative ways out there. The community can support you and the community will. I'll help financially. We need to do maybe a go fund me project, something. But fireworks are not safe and sane. Thank you very much. Next, we have Robert Fish, followed with Chris Martin. Yep. Welcome. Thank you very much. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the council. My name is Robert Fager. I am the commander of Orville Post 1747, Veterans of Foreign Wars. This ill-conceived hostility against the, uh, against the sale of safe and sane fireworks in Oroville is misguided, filled with misinformation and fear-mongering. Public safety has been touted as the reason, leading me to question my own reasoning, my own reasons rather, for fighting this. Am I on the wrong side of right? Is the future funding of my post clouding my judgment and putting public safety at risk? I decided to reach out to the firefighters in our area to find out just that. First, a little bit of background. I'm a firefighter. I'm an old school firefighter. I'm gonna seriously date myself with some of those in the room when I say that I was a tailgate firefighter. 30 plus years ago, when I fought fires outside of Savannah, Georgia, the trucks and engines we had weren't quad cabs with seats for the whole crew, but just two seats for the driver and engineer. The rest of us grabbed onto the ropes on the tailgate and hung on. And boy, did we hang on. I reached out firefighter to firefighter around Orville and asked if I was misguided in my quest to keep on selling safe and sane fireworks. I talked to battalion chiefs, captains, lieutenants, as well as today's equivalent of tailgate firefighters. Not a single one thought that the legal safe, that the legal sale and use of safe and sane fireworks in Orville as a risk to public safety. Not to mention that the sale of safe and sane fireworks in California has the full backing of the California State Fire Marshal's Office. The legal sale of sale, the legal sale rather, of safe and sane fireworks in the city of Orville comes with the power of the city council to control it, as proven by the recent emergency proclamations of this past summer. Yes, the what if happened. A psychotic arsonist started a wildfire during the week of the 4th, causing our local firefighters to be deployed to their maximum capacity. The permit holders and the patrons in Oroville spectacularly heeded those proclamations and proved that we are capable of handling what if. The sale and use of safe and sane fireworks being banned in Oroville would result in the city council's loss of the ability to control it, with almost $400,000 worth of cash being shifted from regulated, legal, safe and sane fireworks sales to the sale of dangerous and unregulated fireworks coming in from Mexico and Nevada. Good luck getting Joe with a trunk full of illegal fireworks to give a damn about your emergency proclamations. 
please refrain from ill-considered actions, including any type of hiatus of issuing permits of well-regulated and well-regarded sale of safe and sane fireworks in the city of Oroville. Anything short would definitely put public safety at risk. And I wanna end with, there is a huge difference between safe and sane fireworks and the illegal fireworks that come in from Mexico and Nevada. Safe and sane fireworks do not launch. They do not fly. They do not explode. When you see things launch, see things Hi. fly. And Thank you, sir. Next, we have Chris Martin, follow along with Diane Byers. This is Mr. Martin. Chris Martin. Mr. Martin, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Martin. Uh, I came here to Oroville in the early 90s from the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, and thought I was dropped off in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and uh, didn't know what I was, what everything was about out here. Um, and it was just so different, you know, from the Bay Area. Fireworks, you could do with no problem. Everywhere you looked was cement. Um, and then I started working and was a tree trimmer for the power lines. I was amazed when I started going out and I actually worked the exact line that where the paradise fire started which took my mom's home left her homeless my, so i was affected my family was affected by the paradise fire but what i was amazed about as a tree trimmer for pg e was the fact that we were able to set brush 12 feet of either side of the line. We're just creating a hotbed out there. So instead of trying to, uh, I know it's easy, you know, to take and make fireworks illegal, you know, but even on the side of Cherokee Road, there's so many areas right along there, just right where we'd have to walk, park the truck. We can't chip the brush. So right on the side of the road, you just throw on brush to either side. Now, small brush, yeah, that's going to go away and compost into the ground within a year or two. But your bigger branches, those are going to take years. And my father-in-law, Lord rest his soul now, was the CDF fire captain. I even asked him his opinion on that different stuff. And he said, his name was Neil Stuckey. And he said, you know, safe and sane fireworks are good as long as they're being properly used. Um, but, you know, the, you, they're good. You know, they, they're all right. Time. Thanks. Next, we have Diana, Diana Byer, follow along with Oli Farpel. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you, Mr. Mayor and council folks. Um, I live in Kelly Ridge as well. My home is just off of Canyon and uh, Royal Oaks. I live up on the hill. Um, but for the grace of God, am I here tonight with my home still intact? Why do I say that? Because the wind changed um, within, within a few minutes of Kelly Ridge going up. My understanding from chatter on the uh, Cal, Cal um, Fire um, radios that had the wind not changed, Kelly Ridge would be gone. Kelly Ridge would have gone up. I wonder what your agenda would have been here today had that happened. I've been here 21 years. I've had to evacuate three times. 
experience, uh, yes, patriotic, yes, I love fireworks, but we don't need to have individual fireworks where we have so many um, incapacitated types roading, roading about anymore. It's too risky. What is the risk reward over having individual fireworks where we could have many beautiful commercial fireworks? So I pray that you minimize the access to these safe and sane or whatever. Thanks. Yeah. Next, we have Olive Arpo, follow along with Michael Brown. Hello, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council. I also live up in Cali Ridge, and right at the Canyon Ridge, where I could see the fire, Thompson Fire, coming straight up. Yes, it was one person that acted irresponsibly, but affected many in the community. So my question is, yes, you can send it to a vote, but because I live outside of the city limits, I can't vote. I have no say, but yet it affects me and it affects the entire community surrounding Ormiel. So I just hope and pray that you guys vote responsibly for the community and how it affects all of us, not just Orville, or just one person that acted irresponsible. Irresponsible. I hope you guys, I mean guys in general, you know, I mean male, female, <laughs> that you vote responsibly for the community. And I thank you for listening to me. Next, we have Michael Brown, follow along as Bonita Maloney. Good evening, Mayor Pittman, uh, members of the council. Um, I'm a firefighter who uh, used to think safe and sane fireworks were in fact safe and sane. But you watch how the industry has been uh, monopolized. There's one, one corporation, TNT, that spends $300,000 plus a year lobbying for themselves. Um, meanwhile, throughout California, homes burn, people are injured. Firefighters are injured, fighting fires caused negligently, accidentally, and intentionally with safe and sane fireworks. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the fire weather and the fuels leading up to when the Thompson fire was ignited. Record, record fuel conditions. Never before in the history of the records being kept has the fire danger been as high as it was uh, in the time leading up to Thompson Fire. Now that would have been the time to ban the sale of fireworks if you're sincere about your commitment to public safety. Now once the fire starts, too late. When the fire danger is so high, it's at a new record level for that early, early period around the end of June, you can't stop a fire readily. So if you're gonna look at, you know, cutting the baby in half, like it sounds like, Maybe you ought to look at codifying when fireworks cannot be ignited, like when there's a red flag fire watch from the National Weather Service, a red flag warning, the conditions are already existing, or when the components of the fuels that dictate how a fire behaves are in such a state that a fire can't be stopped. All these things are readily avail available to you. You can look at them right now online. Your fire department can tell you what they are. But if you're going to allow fireworks, you need to have the huevos to shut it down, sale, and use before the fire starts and people's homes burn. It will happen again. It's inevitable. Thank you. Sir? I, I'd like to get a, an opinion from uh, Chief Tance on that. So uh, I know that when we do the public display, uh, that's part of that contract. If there is a red flag issued, we don't have an event. Uh, is, is there any carryover, any piece of our ordinance that would then trigger uh, a suspension of the use of safe and sane fireworks? 
I'm sorry, it's, it's really echoey when it comes Okay, so the question is, uh, as you know, for our public display, the, for, the firework display, if we have a red flag uh, event, then that's suspended or canceled. That's a part of that contract. And I'm intimately aware of that, obviously, for obvious reasons. But uh, with the safe and sane, is there any triggers in our current current ordinance? As I think he raised a very valid point, uh, it would not make a lot of sense to allow folks to use, um, you know, even safe and sane in a red flag time because it's obviously very dangerous. So, is there any triggers in our current ordinance regarding that? Uh, there isn't in the current ordinance, but uh, absolutely, we could come to council and and make that recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Next one, please. The next uh, speaker is Bonita Maloney, follow along as Michelle Huffman. Hello, thank you, Mayor and Council people. Uh, my name is Bonnie Malone. I've been a member of the community for 51 years, and I have raised a lot of funds as a teacher, as a master gardener, as a docent for the city of Oroville. I know about fundraising, and I know that these um, Organizations are wonderful groups here. The service clubs do wonderful things with their funds. However, we need to change with the changing times. The threat of fire overwhelms all of the possibilities of the good that could be done by raising these funds. We need to think about how many people's lives were destroyed. And I am standing here my the house next door to me burned to the ground fortunately our firefighters the best in the world saved my neighborhood but i'll tell you i'm still a little bit shaky um we can have as other communities do laser shows to show our patriot patriotism we can have um uh what are those things that fly out there Drones, yes, they have drone shows, and they do a lovely, spectacular, uh, patriotic displays for our community. Um, I still don't understand why we can't sell during the wet season for, say, New Year's Eve. I, I don't understand. Our Congress prevents, okays the sale, okays the selling of fireworks during the summer in the middle of the hottest part of the year, and yet you can't sell it in the in the wet season. Is that is that what you said? Can't do that. Whoa, yeah. At any rate, um, I I encourage because the threat is too great. The changing conditions, things are not the same as they were for the last twenty or thirty or forty years. We have to change with the changing times. And we can't risk burning down the county every single summer to support a few uh, service clubs. There are, there are other ways of raising money. Please, let's be innovative, let's be creative, and let's find a way to do that. Thank you. Next, Next we have Michelle Huffman, follow along as Annie and Michael. Michelle? Hello, City Council. I am Michelle Huffman. I'm the representative for Feather River Gymnastics Boosters Club. Um, we have had our fire booth, our fireworks booth, um, for several years. I'm new to the area, but the Boosters Club has a long history with using this as a primary fundraiser to allow us to uh, promote gymnastics and healthy lifestyles and competitive. Uh, avenues for our children. Um, on this particular issue, I want to support a lot of the people that came before me, um, stating that we do have the ordinances and the backup on record to react to red flag situations. Um, I do believe that this is an issue that needs to go to the voters if you see fit. Um, I also feel that it is a city issue and we've heard a lot of people from the community that are outside of the city voicing their opinion. And while I value that, I do think that it does need to go to a vote. Um, 
if we push it that far. Um, most of my points have been made today, so I just wanted to say that um, I hope that you guys consider carefully the laws that we already have um, that are set up for our safety and the repercussions that we have to cancel things and make those decisions based on the environmental impact at in the moment, not just for all of eternity. So thank you for your time and your consideration. Next, we have Annie and Michael follow along with John Tucknor. Hello, I'm um, pleased to be able to speak to you tonight. My name is Ann Michaels. I've lived in Orville for over 40 years. The uh, Thompson fire swept right through my neighborhood. Um, two houses in close proximity to mine burned to the ground. My home would have burned to the ground were it weren't for the uh, firefighters. They cut lines, they sawed branches, they pulled things out of the way. I am eternally grateful to our wonderful firefighters. Um, I think the time has come to stop selling fireworks in our county. Uh, I understand that it's the, this was the work of one person. Uh, however, his firework that caused this tremendous damage was the safe, sane kind. Um, I too have been at parties that have overlooked the valley uh, on the 4th of July and see all of the illegal fireworks. Those will likely still come in, but I think given the times we live in, constant fire danger, year round fire season, we really need to look to um, not, uh, getting a message out there that this is not the way to go for our community. Um, there are, like another speaker said, there are other ways to raise funds. I feel for the organizations who do great things, but it, the time has come to learn other ways. Uh, many communities throughout the state have organizations that find other ways to, to raise funds, and the time has come for us to do that as well. I'm not in favor of putting it to a vote because as one speaker already pointed out, many of us, in fact, Probably most of us who live outside of the city limits wouldn't be allowed to vote on it, yet we are the ones that are most affected by the irresponsible use of fireworks. Thank you. Thank you. Next is John Tucknor, follow along as the cameraman. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, board members, for listening to us. Um, my name is Joan Tickner. I have lived just outside of Oroville, up by the dam uh, for 10 years. I'm a new newbie. Um, back in the early 1980s, well, the late 1980s, I was the first woman member and the first woman president of the Rotary Club of Truckee. My husband, George, was district governor of Rotary District 519 back in 1995-96. We know that there are many ways to raise funds for service clubs other than selling fireworks. We used a lot of those. If you want my advice, give me a call. Um, the other thing I want to say is that um, my house was <clears throat> almost burned down, 360 around my house. If it hadn't been for the wonderful Cal Fire guys, who put retardant all over the hill between us and the dam and all over my house. That's great, thank you. Um, my house would have burned and my son's house would have burned. Um, I'm eternally grateful to them, but we shouldn't have to worry about the fact that we lost hundreds of trees on our property and how are we gonna take care of them? We shouldn't have to worry about taking care of our property during fire season when it's very simple. Don't sell the fireworks. Okay. Um, safe and sane fireworks are only safe and sane in the hands of a safe and sane person. Thank you. 
Next, we have the cameraman. Follow along as Roger Edmundson. Good evening, Oroville residents and Oroville City Council. Regardless of what I say here tonight, I think this issue needs to go to the ballot to be voted on. Um, for a few things I'd like to point out. Um, when the fire started, the sale was suspended. They should have been, I agree, they should have been suspended a little bit sooner with the dry conditions we had. But I think we, you know, we proved a point when Sheriff Honey said, don't be that idiot. And people, you know, manned up and complied. But I think at the end of the day, banning fireworks is not going to stop arsonists. Um, it's only going to increase black sales, uh, black market sales of illegal fireworks and getting them from other cities. Um, I think, you know, what, what we had here was a low value man that tried to pull a scam to get a job as a firefighter because I guess he couldn't just find one because he recently completed a um, certificate course or whatever. And he thought it'd be a genius idea to commit a drive by arson and thinks he's he wasn't gonna get away with it. And he did this by going and buying, you know, a couple dollars worth of fireworks. Well, one, I think we should maybe potentially if our ordinance allows it, amend it to, you know, include a sale minimum. You can't just go buy a $5 baggie of fireworks and then cause a million dollars of damage now some people may not like that but you know if you're really committed to actually being safe and sane and buying safe and sane fireworks and being proper use well then you're willing to spend the 20 or 30 40 dollars to get a, a pack you know not just a little baggie to go commit a drive by arson with but regardless of you know the use of firework or not i mean are you know just because somebody uses uh, an instrument commit uh, an arson doesn't mean we need to start, you know, look at at banning every, you know, he used a firework. Okay. We banned fireworks. Well, we got a lot of people on methamphetamine in this town and it's not a big secret that people get high. And then when the winter comes, they start a fire and, uh, go in the jail. See this, this is a torch that most people use to smoke methamphetamine with. That is a, that is a hot flame. Okay, if somebody starts a fire with a meth torch, are we gonna ban all lighters? What about Bic lighters? This is a Bic lighter. It doesn't take much to hold this up to a dry field for a few minutes and get it going. Okay, what about a road flare? I can go to Walmart right now and buy a pack of three for 15 bucks. Do you know how hot that burns? I light that and chuck it in a field, I'm gone. Okay, thank God there were some people that saw this man and even though it took 50 days and I'm sure we're gonna hear about that from uh, Mr. Ramsey, um, who's, you know, from my understanding is a victim of gunpowder explosions, but I wouldn't let his fear, you know, sway, you know, your decision just because he, you know, pissed off some people and makes enemies in this county. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, regardless, I think we should, you know, make some, you know, common sense decisions, maybe designate some zones, properly allow fireworks. I mean, we got some big parking lots in these parks and we pay people to clean up, you know, the mess afterwards. Hi. So. Thank you. Next one. Next please. is Roger Emmonson. Follow along with Jennifer Martin. My name. Hello. My name is Roger Edmondson. I'm representing the Knights of Columbus, Council 2603 at St. Thomas Apostles Parish in Oroville. I have lived in Oroville since 1983. I have been a Knight for about 15, 20 years. Knights of Columbus is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to empower Catholic men to live in their faith at home, in their parish, at work, and in their community through charity and faith. The sale of fireworks has assisted us in raising funds to support the local community. We offer two $1,000 scholarships for the high school, local high school graduation seniors. Caring for Women Pregnancy Center, which is service families in need of giving individuals options for abortion and fatherhood programs here in Oroville. In the past year, the Knights of Columbus assistant in the center with obtaining thousands of dollars to obtain a sonogram for the local center. We are members of the stage right here in Oroville at this theater. We also support the Sunrise Rotary and we support our local St. Thomas Apostles Church and the parish and the schools. 
uh, not having this fundraiser would ne ne negatively affect our ability to continue supporting these worthy causes. Our fundraise, our funds are not easily replaced by other means, if any. For at least the past 60 years, Oroville citizens have been able to celebrate the birth of this nation with fireworks. We must remember the importance of freedom. We should not lose this freedom because of an arsonist who used a firework to start a t terrible fire. This pyro pyromaniac would have used other sources to incinerate device or, or incineration device, such as a bottle, butane lighter, as the man mentioned, gasoline, or just a little lighter and light some stuff on fire. We have thousands of responsibility, responsible individuals celebrating with safe and sane fireworks in Oroville without going elsewhere or doing deemed criminals themselves. Banning fireworks to stop the future arsonists or wildfires is just not logical. What is next? Should we ban gasoline? Hi. Yes, sir. Next, we have Jennifer March and follow along is Bill Black. Welcome. Hello. My name is Jennifer Martin. I'm a board member and the fundraising organizer for the Oroville Orca swim team. I am definitely in favor of keeping the safe and sane fireworks legal in the Oroville city limits. I was born and raised here and it has been a huge family tradition of many families to come together and celebrate safely on the 4th of July. As the fundraising organizer, it would be detrimental to our team's funds if the fireworks are banned. It would also be a huge impact on all of the other nonprofit organizations and youth sports here in town that have booths. I completely understand how devastating the fires have been around Butte County, but an incredibly small percentage have been started by safe and sane fireworks. The illegal fireworks are much more concerning. If someone is using illegal fireworks, they obviously don't care about the law. Safe and sane fireworks users are trying to follow the laws and be safe while <clears throat> using them in the city limits. Another bigger concern to me is the six hour illegal fireworks show that one of the casinos in town puts on every year. <clears throat> I understand they are on federal land and have their own laws, but it's a very unsafe location. If an arsonist wants to start a fire, they will start that fire with anything they can get their hands on. Please don't punish the law abiding citizens for their ignorant actions. Please, if you are going to do anything, put it to the on the ballot for the citizens to decide. Thank you. Next, we have Bill Black. Follow along as Jackie Glover. Good evening, Council, Mr. Mayor. Um, my name is Bill Black. I'm wearing a Rotary hat because I'm a proud member of Rotary. I'm also a proud member of the American Legion. I'm also a proud member of the VFW. And I'm a local city uh, member. My concern is that we haven't heard or I haven't read anything about what has happened in the city when it comes to the number of fires that have been started by safe and sane fireworks in the last year, two years, 10 years, looking at the history of Oroville. It seems to me that in my neighborhood, which is in the city limits, we have people that use fireworks that uh, are aerial, which means they're not safe and sane. They go off into the trees, they land on people's roofs, and there's absolutely no enforcement. If that's gonna happen in the city limits, it's also happening in the county. We also know people shoot off their guns. I can't be, I can't say that those bullets are starting fires, but it seems to me that somebody else that is that irresponsible could be starting a fire without even knowing it. So my concern right now is that we need more information from the firefighting community we need to understand from the law enforcement community, how many people have been arrested, how many people have been charged and arrested, how many people have been prosecuted by our fabulous district attorney, uh, district attorney, Mike Ramsey, who happens to be here. I think if we have a better understanding about what enforcement is about, we'll know whether or not we have a real problem. 
And I'm not unsympathetic to those who live in areas who have lost their homes because of fires. More so, I am very sympathetic. All you have to do is drive up the hill and see what the fire did. But as others have said, one person with a match can start a fire. A couple, older couple, many years ago up in Shasta County, parked on the side of the road over some grass that had grown and died. And that catalytic converter started one of the first worst fires in Chasta history. So it doesn't take much, but I think we need to have a better understanding before we point, start pointing fingers at the city residents being irresponsible and causing fires, when in fact, I don't remember reading very much in the time I've been here about fires started in the city. So hopefully we can get some more information from this uh, effort. Thank you. Next, we have Jackie Glover. Follow along as Lena Draper. Good evening, Council and Mayor. Some of you may, may not know, I've lived in the city limits for 35 years. I'm a mom and a board member of the Orville Orcas. I do have a few points for you. Safe and Sane Fireworks has been an annual tradition in my family since I was a young child. As a mom, I've carried this tradition on with my son. Additionally, all of my friends and their families from the county and surrounding areas come and celebrate fireworks with us because we were able to do them in the city limits. This has been creating lifelong memories and friends and family with friends and family as we celebrate our freedom. The Orcas were a team of 80 swimmers ages four to 18. We've been around for over 30 years. We give children and families, or we are the children's extended families because we spend five to seven days together every week all summer long. Often our swimmers are leaders in the community. As a board, this is one third of the funds that we use uh, for our budget to operate. It would take 10 to 15 bake sales, car washes, dinners, things like that to replace this one fundraiser. Over 50% of the swimmers are low-income families, and without this fundraiser, we would be looking at raising our registration fees by double. Several of the members of these kids that are able to participate that are low-income are our top medal winners at our championship meet with over 600 swimmers, and some are going off to college to swim because of this sport. In addition to the ORCAs, this fundraiser also supports many other local school sports and other youth organizations. And for most of them, or some of them, this is not all most of them, for some of them, this is their only source of income that allows them to support the community. Another point that I wanted to make is that as a council, you guys a few years ago declared yourself as a constitutional republic. A ban just doesn't make sense. You stated that you didn't want to infringe more on people's rights, and now you're considering laws to be stricter than the state. It doesn't make sense. Lastly, I just, and I know you guys know this, but most of the people speaking against this aren't, do not even live in the city limits. And to ban, to take their word to ban something that affects those of us that live in the city limits, I hope that you take that into consideration and don't make a decision based off of their input. Please don't entertain a ban, entertain the ban at all. But if you're going to, I do hope that you put it to a vote of the people. Thank you. Next, we have Lena Draper. Follow along is Mike Ramsey. Lena Draper. Okay, we're moving along. It's next is. Mike Renzi, follow along is Christopher Whitney. Good evening. I'm Mike Ramsey. I'm Butte County District Attorney. I'm also a uh, former Orville uh, Cub Scout. Didn't quite make it to Boy Scout. So I didn't, I didn't memorize all of that, but uh, I'm also uh, bringing some facts from our Butte County Fire Chief, Garrett uh, Solon, who indicated in the last two years in the county, uh, excluding Orville, there were some 70 fireworks-related calls, 18 of which caused fires. In Orville itself in the last two years, 
31 fireworks related calls that caused 13 fires. So there are some facts for you. Uh, we've talked about the Thompson fire, talked about the Thompson fire at the last meeting on this, this issue. And uh, that was an extraordinarily dangerous fire. Uh, and it did affect the eastern part of Orville and it affected that uh, part of Orville that fireworks are not allowed in. And that area that the mayor has indicated, our neighborhood, Dave, so we had to be evacuated. Now, uh, I wanna make a note. There was some indications of right. Uh, let me explain uh, from the law. There is no constitutional right to fireworks as there are to guns or uh, other uh, happiness uh, matters. But the uh, my function many times is to be buzzkill. And in the lens of public safety, in 1986, June of 1986, up until that time, the County of Butte allowed safe and sane fireworks. At that time, it was banned and the fires were starting to become more intense and it was the determination of the county and the board of supervisors at that time to pass an ordinance that said all fireworks within the unincorporated area is banned as it is in paradise as it is in chico where other organizations uh, have their charities and are somehow able to support those particular charities. I make a note that uh, I also grew up in this community with safe and sane fireworks, loved them, but I loved more the community fireworks that came about first up on the dam, then out the four bay. Hi. Thank you. Next we have Christopher Whitley, follow along as Lisa Torres. Hello, thanks for the opportunity. My name is Christopher Whitley. I live in District F, downtown Oroville, a resident and homeowner. And I have been at the end of the list, so a lot of the points on my sheet here have been made. Um, not only the Thompson fire concerns me, but I feel like there's fire that has encompassed the whole surrounding area of the city of Oroville. So I don't want Oroville to become another paradise. Um, life and property is a major concern for me. Uh, somebody mentioned um, the trauma from fire victims. Um, I think that's important to keep in mind. I think we have a lot of veterans in our community that also may have PTSD. That's important to think about as well as the terrorizing of our pets. Um, I think that um, a ban is common sense and there are many bans in the county. So I, I don't think that it's that much of a leap. Um, I think that a representative government is important. And I think that we have elected the city council to make decisions, and I do not think that this should go to the ballot, um, but I understand why you might do that. Um, I think something that make, might make sense is a moratorium until the time and money that it takes to get a ballot initiative going um, would make sense to me, as well as someone made a point for gathering data. So. A uh, moratorium sounds like a uh, common sense effort as well. And that's all I have. Thank you. Next, we have Lisa Torres. Follow along is Dana Taylor. Could the sound guys give some of her mic into the monitor a little more and as well as well a little bit more of these, this mic into the monitor, please. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and all those on the dais, council members. I just wanna thank um, 
Mayor Pittman, thank you for um, Saturday. We really enjoyed ourselves. The rain was not a problem. So um, I just want to say, I am not only a community member, but a parent of a gymnast and also a board member for Feather River Elite Gymnastics. I know my heart goes out to those that have suffered during the fires and, and I get it. I understand why they are so against the fireworks. What I want to say as a parent is that we, I have been with the, with the booster club for a long time. Now we have relied on the fireworks booths in order to raise funds. Yes, a lot of people sit there say it's easy to raise funds, but there are so many organizations that are going for fundraising all at the same time. These children at the gymnastics, these are children that go out into other states, represent Orville. Whereas if they were, if we would not have the funds to do that, they would not be able to do that. Just like every other sport, it's expensive and it can get expensive. But at the same time, when we're, there's a lot of people dealing with a lot of different things, a lot of people can't sit there and support. They say they will support, and I get it. Some people do support certain organizations and that's good. And I applaud them, but there's, they don't, but there's certain organizations that, you know, we go out, we fundraise, but it's hard. And so this is one of the reasons why we want the fireworks booths, because as a matter of fact, we were the only ones last year, well, actually this year, as soon as you guys said stop the fireworks, we stopped selling the fireworks. And we are feeling the pain right now because those funds are lost. We do not have those funds in order to do a lot of things that offset the cost for parents, for the gymnasts. So while I, my heart goes out to those, and I understand it and I get it, and if you guys do decide to take it to this, to the um, the community, please allow us to continue to sell fireworks until the vote is in. This is a major fundraiser for all organizations, and we just want to provide the best we can for our kids. We want our kids to succeed. Sometimes it costs a lot, and this is the cost right now. We want our kids off the streets, and we want them productive. Thank you. Next, we have Dana Taylor. Follow along is George McRae. Hello, oh, thank you for your time. Um, my name is Dina Taylor. I'm the president of the American Legion Auxiliary here in Oroville, as well as being part of the American Legion Riders. We are a veterans organization. Um, we do a lot of work with veterans and also with our communities. The fundraising in the week that we, we make at the fireworks booth, we can't make that much in a week selling candy bars. Um, it is very competitive out there for that. But also, it's important, I think, that um, we think about the, the tradition and celebrating the holiday. It's something that I did with my kids growing up, and now I'm doing it with my grandkids. We do it in a safe and sane way. And safe and sane fireworks are very different than the illegal fireworks. I've seen both, and I've seen the damage that they can cause. Um, I live in Berry Creek. I don't live in the city limits, but we come down to the city limits in a safe place and light our fireworks. I understand how the PTSD and the fear for people that live in rural areas that have burned, I, I get it that they're scared, um, but we're not banning lawn mowers or weed eaters or so many other things that can cause fires and dry grass, yet we have people that do it when it's not safe. Um, I think it would be wrong for the sale of fire, fireworks to be banned prior to any kind of a vote to decide what the people want. I think we should be allowed to continue selling fireworks until or in, they make it illegal for us to do so. Um, it is a big deal for us, for all the nonprofits. It's a huge deal. We're trying to do good work for the community and we volunteer our time to do that, but we only have so many hours. So. Um, most of the po points that I want to make have already been spoken, so I won't take up any more of your time, but thank you for letting me speak. Next, we have George Murray, follow along as Natalie shared. Uh, good evening, City Council. Good 
Uh, good evening, other residents here. Uh, my name is George McRae. I live in Palermo. And uh, starting in June, uh, my wife and I were shopping at Rayleigh's and at Rite Aid, and everybody's emergency warning went off on every single cell phone at Rayleigh's repeatedly with the Thompson fire exploded and burned out of control. One of the things you need to understand is that this isn't about city limits because fires don't respect city limits. Fires, uh, like if you take, for example, the Park fire that blew up, that just extended from Chico all the way to Mount Lassen. And so it's, it's completely insane when we know that most wildfires are started by human beings. I believe the figure is 94 or 95% of wildfires are started by some sort of human negligence. And whether it's safe and sane fireworks or whether it's somebody's lawnmower or whether it's an arsonist, it doesn't matter. We're living with this continuous fear 12 months of the year. Um, I have watch duty, and I am recommending that everybody has watch duty on their phones. But when you're trying to escape a fire, when we were trying to pack up in complete darkness because the power went out in Palermo because of the Apache fire, and there was no indication in what direction that was going. And we started out with the Grubbs fire, the Apache fire, the Four Junes fire, the Thompson fire, and then numerous fires that watch duty is no longer reporting because it doesn't qualify for the number of fire engines to get an it to get a warning issued out in our area because it's just too damn many of it, many fires. And it doesn't matter what the cause is. And if this is a matter of fundraising, the Girl Scouts raise millions of dollars every year with cookies, for God's sake. So there's plenty of opportunities for raising fun. It, it, that's like a ridiculous, ridiculous thing. And the other thing, I think that city council and people in responsibility positions of responsibility should take under consideration is that there's something, there's litigation. You're gonna get an angry lawyer who's going to say that there was a um, loss of life and somebody's gonna be held responsible and it's gonna be traced to the city for allowing an item to be sold or it's gonna be a, 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 a nonprofit group and they're gonna pursue this. And if I was an attorney, and I'll tell you right now how I'm angry I am having to live with this continuous fear 24 hours a day, I, I, that if I was an attorney, I would be pursuing litigation right now on any of these kinds of fires that I could trace back to some sort of irresponsible um, source um, of the fire. And, I, you know, there's a lot of other ways of celebrating your patriotism as, as an American besides letting off something smoldering in your driveway to entertain your children and to put the rest of the community out here. Hi. Anyway. Next, we have Natalie Scher. Follow along is Tammy Flicker. Okay, next we have Tammy Flicker along is Carl Anderson. Good evening, Mayor and Councilors. Um, most of you know me, I'm Tammy Flicker. I was not at the last meeting, so I do apologize. Mine's more for clarification, a question. Will this ban all the sales? Because currently you can go into those big box stores uh, on every corner and you can buy fireworks. So if we discontinue the um, nonprofits, can they still go to Walmart and buy them? Or will this ban all sales? Because I know even I can go at the base of Kelly Ridge and buy in the county fireworks at a store. That's just my question. Um, I didn't understand if it was just for the booths of the nonprofits or anywhere. Can we stop those big stores from selling? I, I can speak to that if you'd like. Ms. Mayor, would you like me to touch on that? Or? Yeah, please do. So to sell any firework in the city of Orville, you need a, a permit through the city and a business license and through the, the state fire marshal's office. So they can, but they have to go through the same process as anybody else. And typically you do, but it's at a very small scale. But yes, you're correct. But they have to go through the same process as anybody else to say, sell fireworks in the city of Orville. So we could say no to the booths of nonprofits, but the big stores can still sell them most likely. We, we have control over who sells fireworks. And that's based off the population in the city of Orville uh, off every thousand people would be per booth. But okay. we do have control. 
and typically they do sm sell a small amount and they go through the same inspections as any booth would as well. Hopefully that answers your question. Kind of, but kind of not. <laughs> so it's just a thought, just to think if, you know, just because we're doing it, is the other people going to be not selling as well? Thank you. Thank you. And last we have Carol Anderson. Thank you for hearing me. Um, I've lived here for about 50 years now. And the thing you've got to realize, if you've been around that long, things change. This is not the same community that I moved to. Downtown was vibrant. I never went to Chico to shop for anything when I first moved here. And now I find that I often have to. Um, so things changed environmentally. I've, I've been in that house out in the foothills for like I say, almost 50 years now, and I never worried about fire until about 10 years ago, starting around the time of the Wall Fire, Ponderosa Fire, things began to become apparent that we had a problem. But it changed, the, the environment's changed, and we have to change in response to that. I loved fireworks as a kid. My son had fireworks, I've still got a scar on my leg where my brother put out a sparkler. But uh, the, other issue that was brought up, some people seem to think that this is a matter of patriotism. I don't know, buying a lot of stuff from China to burn up doesn't seem like it's necessarily the patriotic thing to do. And when I was a kid, patriotism meant that you took care of your family, your citizens, your community, your country. It wasn't a matter of your personal rights. It was a matter of your caring for your community. That's what patriotism was. And so I, I just think that if you're really interested in that, you're gonna be taking care of your community. And yeah, I'm outside the city limits, but I spend all my money inside the city limits. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, we do not have any more the car speaker. All right, thank you. And we've checked the box to make sure we don't have any late arrivals. Yes, we did. Okay, thank you. Well, folks, I certainly appreciate all the discussion. Um, it kind of goes back to council for the topics. Um, personally, I think there's some innovative ideas that have been presented tonight that I haven't thought of. Um, and uh, the idea of having in the ordinance uh, the uh, red flag status to be able to stop the use of uh, is a very interesting idea. And uh, prior to that time, given the conditions, uh, the other question that was brought to me about the idea of limiting the use of certain holidays, which the suggestion was Veterans Day and uh, New Year's Day uh, and the 4th, given that the weather conditions would be appropriate. Um, I think that's an interesting idea for this discussion. Uh, one of my particular problems that I've, I've worked for the fire department for 35 years and I understand this and I spend every 4th of July on the streets. And the one thing that I have to say to all in this room is it's really hard for me to remember the responsible families that take the neighborhoods and get a, two boxes together and they share the celebration in the streets. I saw that time and time again and the grandmothers that wanna go get some fireworks for their kids, their grandkids and celebrate that at their homes. Uh, the responsible people, are, I'm kind of speaking up for them uh, because if we completely eliminate this, that that's it's almost like penalizing that group. Certainly, we have some problems in our community of people that decide not to follow the rules or the directions. And safe and sane have directions. And obviously, this this person that I want to thank Mr. Ramsey for properly prosecuting that individual um, needs to be penalized because certainly he, <clears throat> you know, did not follow directions, did not. I mean, you're not even supposed to possess a safe and sane firework in the county of Butte. That's a rule all by itself. And, you know, I think the idea that if we limit the use to certain times of the year that are only holidays would be much easier on the law enforcement perspective because right now the city of Orville ordinance does not allow or I mean, allows the use of any time 365 days a year. I think it's probably time that we remove that and reduce it down to some very narrow times. Um, it's my suggestion from the, uh, the 
comments I've heard and the emails that I've received. Uh, and I want to thank Mr. Brown for that suggestion. I think that's really a great idea. We had to do it under declaration of a disaster this year because of the issue, but we should have been a little bit more foresighted to think about, gee, we see a red flag week coming up and just limit the fact that you can't use them during that period of time. That makes a lot of sense because what if next year it rains on 4th of July? I mean, that's that's happened before. And I mean, and I'm not trying to be facetious, but I think it allows the government to adjust to the weather and adjust to those that want to celebrate and also adjust to those that feel in fear. I mean, you could stop it. So those are just my comments at this point. I'm going to look to the rest of the council for comments. Anyone first? Go ahead, Ms. Riggs. Thank you. Uh, I want to first thank everyone again for attending tonight. Uh, and specifically, I want to thank our nonprofits and the amazing investment that you all have in our community. Uh, it's very clear that you're passionate about what you do and passionate about supporting our community. And I really think that that dedication um, and passion should be commended. So thank you for that. Um, I do. I am under the um, school of thinking that it is our responsibility as a council to pursue the safety of our community. Uh, I heard a lot of people talk about the Thompson fire, and that is a um, an occurrence that sparked this conversation in the public you know, in the public eye. However, I don't see that as a driving motivation for why uh, this ban or why we might consider such a ban. Um, I see it more as something that just instigated the conversation now instead of later. Um, I, I believe that there are many ways for us to support one another, for us to be neighborly towards one another, for us to uh, fundraise for our valued nonprofits, and many ways for us to demonstrate our patriotism. Um, and for me, based on the current climate and based on the current experience and um, risks associated with our community, I don't see a scenario in which I would find safe and sane fireworks appropriate. Um, so that is where I stand. And with that, I would motion that we make a temporary ban on safe and sane sale and use and that that ban remain in place until the item is able to go forth for a uh, public vote. Thank you. Do we have to agenda size that motion? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. In our agenda tonight, if we made a motion tonight, does that have to be voted on the next meeting? No, we have, we have a agenda. We have to provide the direction to staff on any changes the council may wish to implement with regard to the sale and use. Okay. Um, we can certainly, we, Mr. Mayor, we could certainly, if you, if the, if, if it's the council's wishes, we could do a little more research. I know there's some discussion on some data and bring back some more information if the council, I mean, obviously there's, I know there's permitting requirements for vendors perspective on sales, but we could bring back more information if that was the council's wishes. And I know, I'm not sure if, if the fire chief has anything to add to the discussion at this point as well. Chief Tins, do you have any comments to add? Yeah, I'm happy to obviously answer any questions council may have as well. Um, I have some staff tonight. Mr. Ramsey did cover some of those on behalf of Chief Shulin, and Chief Shulin is unfortunately unable to attend tonight. Um, but I do have some numbers as well. Uh, he, he had already mentioned them. So if there's any clarifying questions on those or anything I can add, those are only two years. I've worked for the city for over 10. I could speak before the contract or after. I don't want to get into a huge long, I'm sure everyone wants to go home tonight, but I am here as a resource for, for council. And if there's any questions or anything I could add on to as far as response or, or anything as such, I'm, I'm happy to do so. I think there's one issue that already came up is they mentioned the fireworks were the cause of the fires. Is there a definition about was it safe and sane fireworks or were it illegal fireworks? Do we have that uh, description? <laughs> yeah, safe and sane. Safe, safe and sane were the items that were used Correct. in starting those. Okay, thank you. All right, um, if we're going to hold on to Councilman Riggs. We have a couple comments here. Go ahead. Uh, so again, I just wanted to um, 
request that the council uh, considers a letter to that to our assembly for AB 3065. And that just, again, it adds tools to our toolbox as we consider this complex issue. And I also want to add that I've personally been uh, evacuated because of fire, but living before I lived in the city limits. Uh, I also lost a personal uh, family cabin that had been in the family for 35 years in Berry Creek. Um, and I understand the uh, concern of being responsible when it comes to public safety. This last couple of years, I've uh, had to face uh, uh, very unpopular, canceling whether it's a parade of lights or postponing, again, because the National Weather Service issues high wind warning. You know, God forbid a little child were to be blown off a, you know, a float or, or, or worse, um, or Feather Fiesta days, you know, postponing that and moving it to another day. Very unpopular, in fact, frequently, you know, it's tradition. You shouldn't be doing that. Uh, yeah, but also we have a responsibility to the safety of our community. So, you know, all these issues that have been brought up, I'm listening very intently. I think there's been some very, very well-crafted um, comments and things for us to just grapple with and consider. Um, this is, of course, then going against all the grain of our experience up our upbringing, right? Our traditions. I think all of us have, you know, enjoyed the the moments of having that family time and lighting off fireworks and all that that brings to our experience and building community, building family. This is not uh, an easy issue. And the fact is, is that we are, um, you know, times are changing. And so we have to grapple with with all of this. And so again, that kind of, kind of just circled back around to me wanting to reach out to our state legislature, at least give us as a city a tool um, to perhaps find some sort of uh, middle ground on this issue. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's some of my comments at this point. So thank you. Can I? Yes. yes. Councilman Johnstone, please. Thank you so much. So I really appreciate hearing from all of you tonight. Um, I um, appreciate that you took the time out to come and voice your concerns and um, on both for and against it. I am 100% for community safety, but I'm also wanting to look further into our other options to be able to balance that with community traditions as well. So I um, would like to research different avenues, different options moving forward before we make a determination. Okay, who else? Mr. Weber? <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, thank you for everybody that has uh, spoke. I think you all had excellent points um, that need to be weighed and concerned. Um, I too would also like to um, digest more information about this uh, and have time to really think about this. So I would like to propose that we table this till November 19th. Um, and then that will give us some um, adequate time to really digest this, to really uh, mill it over, to figure out a good solid direction to go. Because I think that this is clearly um, an item that is going to be um, it's going to affect a lot of people either way. So um, I think we need to be very um, circumspect in the way we do our, our decision-making process right now. And I think we should um, take into consider what's been said, weigh it, and then act upon it uh, in accordance. Uh, but I think we just need a little more time. That personally, I would like some more time myself. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I I would agree to that because this is a complex issue without question. Um, I would like to myself add to that idea of tabling to have a draft put together over what would it take to uh, assemble an ordinance that limited the use and also gave the fire department the ability to to uh, hold off based upon weather conditions. What What kind of thing would that look like so we could bring it back to look at it? Um, and then also, what would it cost to have an election? Just as information to be brought back to that time. Um, I will tell you, if you go on our, the city's uh, agenda site, the supplier provided a lot of information of other cities that are in the same 
situation. And in some cities, they banned them, and then there was a vote to reverse the ban. So this is not a, a simple issue up and down the state of California. And I encourage you to look at the cities that have been in the same um, situation. Uh, it's just more information to look at. Um, I have no problem with a, a future vote, but I need to find out what that cost and when it could be done and those kind of things, uh, which is research equipment to be done. Um, I would like to see that as you know a draft idea of what, what would it take to do that uh, right now, we have done nothing, but at the same time, if we draft a couple things that we can look at as an option one, two, or three, I think that would be a very wise thing to do to bring it back at that time. And the options of what we talked about, the uh, limiting it uh, under weather conditions for that particular day, and then the idea of having it only on certain holidays of the year. Maybe some of you might have suggestions on what holidays you would like to see that happen. Uh, that might be an option too. Um, we had an motion on the table. I don't know if we have a second. Do we have a motion to adjourn this to another uh, table? Motion okay. to adjourn it. <laughs> All right. And do we have a second on that motion? Sorry. Postpone it and table it until November 19th. Right. With, okay. some, with some information. So we actually have to vote on that one before we consider the other one. So we call a roll on this motion, correct? Yes. Yep. The, the motion to table it. Right. To if, table. if I may, Mr. Mayor, if uh, if if there is a desire to to bring a draft ordinance, would it be possible to push it back to December, the first meeting in December, sure. or is there a desire for it? it with, okay, that's fine. Just to give, I just want to make sure staff has enough time to do some adequate research on that. Yeah. So we'll amend that to the city administrator's date. Yes. All right. Thank you all. This doesn't. This continues the discussion, folks. So please continue your input. I don't, well, yeah, go ahead. Excuse me. <laughs> Call the roll. Uh, uh, Council Member Johnston. Yes. Council Member Riggs. Begrudgingly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Thompson. Before I vote, I just want to let everybody know. I know that um, our mayor was evacuated during the Thompson fire, and uh, so was my family. And we don't take this discussion lightly by any means this is um, something that i know that has personally affected a lot of our community and it's personally affected my family and uh, i definitely weigh this very seriously so but uh, my my vote right now is yes to table it council member weber yes vice mayor smith yes mayor Pittman. yes Again, I want to seriously thank you all for this. Uh, and I, it was kind of a, a guesstimate on how many would show up. And I'm very happy that we moved this to the State Theater to accommodate all of you to come here because clearly we would have had to cancel the meeting if we were in the city council chambers. There's way more than that capacity of that room. So thank you all for coming. Um, we will continue this discussion. Uh, now I will also call for adjournment of this meeting to the next regularly held meeting on november 5th at mr mayor yes sir i believe we have we have one more um public comment option as well oh, excuse me you're, you're correct do we have any more public comments for non-agenda slips mr mayor we do not have any public comment okay thank you appreciate that almost forgot it it was on my checklist anyway this meeting will be adjourned to the next meeting regular meeting on november 5th 2024 at 4 p.m at the regular city council chambers thank you all